Easter, we ask you, Lord, to continue to assist us with your graces and blessings, particularly today as we explore getting uh, able to understand issues at the end of life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And help us to plug the cover. <laughs> <laughs> Remember to plug it in. I'm going to move this. You can stay there if you want. Good morning. I am supposed to talk about um, the sacrament of the sick. But before that, let me say that this parish, by doing what we are doing today, is being ahead of, of, of different problems that people face at the end of life. We are beginning this process of teaching some things by beginning where a Catholic person needs to begin, the sacrament of the sick. It was used to, it was called in the past, extreme unction. What, what another name did I get? Last rites. And those who didn't know much about the truth is uh, the blessing of the priest. <laughs> and it was a, a, a really scary time with the sacrament because people thought that this extreme unction was for somebody who had it was in his last moment. And Catholics were very uh, scared of that, and many people in the hospital with, who were, had uh, somebody who was ill, they didn't call the priest because they said, they thought the minute the priest enters this room, we know that this is the last time we're gonna see the person alive. So we don't call the sacrament at the end of life or, or when you're sick, extreme unction anymore, although you frequently hear that in nursing homes or hospitals or people who have not been in the church very much lately. They say the last rites, extreme unction for somebody who is dying. The church, around 30 years ago, was able to review this sacrament, and they were able to conclude that the sacrament is not for the dying, it's for the sick. And for this, when they say it's a sacrament of the sick, is somebody who has a chronic illness, like diabetics, I think I'm gonna get it soon. Yesterday I was diagnosed with something that is called metabolic, metabolism syndrome, which means I have a borderline blood pressure, I have borderline the sugar level, and I have a borderline my triglycerides. So when you ask me to go to your homes, don't Give me lots of carbohydrates. <laughs> Just a bowl of lettuce. <laughs> Just a bowl of lettuce. That's all you're going to get from me. <laughs> Cucumber. Cucumber. I can have that. <laughs> and uh, got the name of that letter that is from China. What do you call that? Bokshoi. That's another name. Anyway, I it used to be a family here at the one o'clock mass that they used to bring for potlucks a salad that was only that, the vegetables, and I call that Lenten salad. <laughs> <laughs> now I, I want to get that. Anyway, so it's no longer the stream engine or the last rites is called the sacrament of the sick. A lady who is pregnant, is that's not an illness, but it requires help from God. A person
person who has diabetic condition, somebody who has metabolism syndrome, and it's a known thing, somebody who has um, mental disorders like anxiety or depression, even addictions are supposed to be uh, people with addiction are supposed to receive the blessing. And they were able to look at the healing ministry of Jesus Christ. And he, he offered healing, not just to those who were dying, but to those who were chronically ill. The man with a paralyzed leg, somebody who was blind, somebody who had like the woman at the well had a bad life and she offered healing to, to those way of doing things in life. And and he and then the church uh, took from a letter of James that is, is a very beautiful passage that explains to us very well what this sacrament is all about. The introduction of the sacrament, uh, the structure of reading says this, my dear friends, we are gathered here in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is present among us. As the apostle relate the sick came to him for healing. Moreover, he loves us so much that he died for our sake. Through the Apostle James, he has commanded us, are there any who are sick among you? Let them send for the priests of the church and let the priests pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick persons and the Lord will raise them up. If they have committed any sins, their sins will be forgiven them. So two things will happen when this sacrament is given to a person. Let the priest pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick persons. Meaning that if it is God's will, the person will get well. But furthermore, he says, if the person had committed any sins, their sins will be forgiven them. Meaning, that this person who received the sacrament by virtue of the sacrament, he will be absolved of all his sins. I, I normally say you get a bonus <laughs> <laughs> when you receive the sacrament. You, you, you get well, if it is God's will, but also your spirit for sure is going to be brand new because God has come with this sacrament and make you whole again in your spirit. So, so this is the way the church wants us to uh, uh, serve those who are sick. Call the priest before the person is in his last moments. If somebody is 94, it's time to call the priest, even if the person is still doing well so that there is an opportunity for the person to understand the blessings of God in terms of healing of the body and healing of the soul. There are many people who enter into the process of hospice. And most people, when they enter into that process, they know that their lives are coming to an end. The doctors more or less 
advise the family and the person you probably will have three more months or six more months. Sometimes they're wrong because they last two years. I remember the time when my dear friend, like a brother who was a priest, and I asked him to come to visit with me to the United States when he was from Colombia. In California, I visited the missions, and he received a phone call saying that his, he knew his mother had cancer, but the, the mother had turned for the worse, and they said, come back immediately. So we were in one of those missions, and there was a, a, a chapel dedicated to a saint that is very well known for helping those who are ill with cancer. And the chapel was full of wax because the, all the candles that were, had been burned. So we pray for Aura. The name of the lady was Aura, who was supposed to die quickly. And then he made arrangements and went back to Colombia. She received the sacrament of the sick and she lasts one more year, one more year without pain. And she was able to do things that she didn't have any chance to do when they told her that she was dying. So sacrament of the sick helps immensely spiritually because the person is able to make peace with God and receive the graces of being able to confront the end of life in a more positive and in a more uh, peaceful way. You call the priest. And I, I, I give the anointed of the sick often after Mass to people who come and say, I'm not feeling well. I have pain in my arms. I'm a welder and I cannot eat anymore. So they come and ask for the sacrament. They believe firmly that the Lord can do what others cannot do. And then the oil that is used is a, an oil that is blessed in each diocese at the Christian Mass. And this, and, and the tradition tells us that in the past, most remedies were based on oil. So, so the church use, uses an element that is traditionally source of healing, along with the grace of God that comes with the anointing of the sick. Now the, the priest says, through this holy anointing, may the Lord in his love and mercy help you with the grace of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord who frees you from sin save you and raise you up. That's the formula that is being used with this. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you.